What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. First order of business today. Got a couple pretty significant contracts that we need to square up. Two individuals specifically come to mind. Jonathan Allen, we tried to bring him back last episode on a two-year $53 million deal, and he turned us down. Now, Jonathan Allen will get franchise tag if we can't lock him in this season, so I'm not too worried about it, but I would like to go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, I mean, I'll move the bonus up a little bit, salary up to 10 mil. I would like to bring him back two years. He is 30, so two years, $56 million. He should accept this, I'm thinking, and Jonathan Allen is going to be back with us for the long haul, which is pretty important. I think he has led the NFL back-to-back -back years in this franchise and tackles for loss, and he is pretty much our premier run stuffer on the defensive line. Now, Brian Robinson, I think that he earned himself a contract extension last week. If the price is right, he did step in for the injured Dudley Saxton, and he played well. Over 100 yards on the ground, averaged 4.6 maybe, 4.7 yards per carry. Now, I'm not going to overpay for him you know, too much. We do have rookie Dwight Jackson out of UAB who is just itching to see the field. But maybe bringing Brian in on a three-year deal since he is still young will up the money about a mil from what he's expected. Don't know if he will accept this or not, but we're going to at least get the ball rolling. And Brian is looking for a better fit. So that is interesting. Again, not going to break the bank too much for Brian. Um, so maybe, you know, depending on what he does the rest of the season, he could be potential trade stock to get some of our draft capital back. We're three and two on the season tied with the Dallas Cowboys. Surprise, surprise there. Taking on another three and two team in the Seattle Seahawks. Same overall as us as well. And we have heavy rain in the forecast. So that means that I'm sure this is going to be heavy focus on running the ball, especially since Dudley is back with a slick football and a rough footing. It'll be hard to establish a good rhythm in the passing game. So practice your hands off handoffs because we're going to need to be doing that a lot this week. So we need to beat the Seahawks and also rack up 150 plus rushing yards on the ground, which I think is doable. Dudley, before he exited the game due to injury uh, last week, he was doing great. He was already at like 74 yards, something like that before he got injured. So I think it's definitely doable. Checking out these Seahawks here. They still got Geno Smith under center and they got Kenneth Walker, who's developing nicely. Zach Charbonnet is going to be injured, so he will not be playing in this one. And DK Metcalf is here, uh, but Tyler Lockett is not. He's also injured as well. So JSN, superstar development now in this franchise, and rookie Will Hayes out of Stanford are going to be the wide receivers. Tight ends, we got Noah Fant, we got Adam Troutman, nothing too crazy there. Charles Cross, a very good left tackle. Not good on the left guard position, though. A couple auto-generated guys, sub 70%, and then Derek Nix. I remember scouting him in the first offseason. He's developing pretty good. And then a rookie, Glenn Falk, as well, looking like he is a pretty good center. Day one starter tag there for Glenn. Abraham Lucas is the right tackle. Defensive end, we got Emmanuel Ogba on the left side. Charles Omenihu found his way to Seattle. And then Milton Williams and uh, Seahawks first round pick, pick 12, rookie Matthew Britton. The defensive tackle is hurt. So that is a big loss for them. He's hitting dev too. And he looks, he looks pretty good out of the gates. So kind of happy that we're not going to have to uh, to deal with Mr. Matthew there. <laughs> Sione Taki Taki is the linebacker. Shaq Thompson also injured. So lots of injuries for these Seahawks. Chad Muma will be filling in on the Mike linebacker position. Yuchenna Nwosu and another injury. Oh my gosh. Tariq Woolen with that 98 speed. Not going to have to deal with that today. Awesome. Devin Witherspoon and Rasul Douglas, still very good corners in their own right. Uh, rookie, or I'm sorry, two-year pro Tavares Harrell out of USC. That was the Seahawks' second-round pick last year. Jamal Adams is here. He just got cut in real life, but still here in this franchise. Kicking the ball away is Jason Sanders and putting the ball 
Michael Dixon, so sneaky good Seahawks team. Can't underestimate them. They do got a pretty good roster. Big upgrade here for the Saxonator. Gonna need all the upgrades we can get in this one as a rainy day in Lumen Field will probably mean lots of Dudley carries. And I see no reason to stop going elusive back. That is Dudley's big strength. If we could get a speed upgrade in there with him already having 91 or 93 speed, I think he has, uh, I believe, that would just be phenomenal. Yeah, 93 speed. He's very agile already, and he can accelerate the ball at a very high level. And then our center, Ricky Stromberg, who has seen some action uh, due to offensive line injuries. Right now, Andrew Wiley is actually injured, as a matter of fact. So that could thrust Ricky into some extra action here. And uh, we'll let the CPU handle Greg Gilmore. Don't even know who you are, my brother. I am so sorry about that. Come on, man. But we are here, guys, looking to potentially uh, jump the Cowboys, be number one in the NFC East. And if you guys are fired up for more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. I was going to do it at 750 subscribers, but I've been giving away a lot of money in Sentinel Sportsbook. And if you guys haven't been playing Sentinel Sportsbook, check that out in the community post because you are missing out. But without further ado, let's get down to a rainy Lumen Field in Seattle and get ready for the game. Looks like a dark and dreary day here in Seattle. And speaking of dark, I hope you guys are vibing with my new light setup here. I got the lights turned down and the light shining bright on me here. I'm going full villain mode, man. JJ Ford needs to unleash the darkness, and we need to get ourselves to a freaking Super Bowl. We were so close last season, lost in the NFC Divisional round playoffs to the Dallas Cowboys, and I feel like this year, anything less than a Super Bowl is a letdown. So hopefully we can get there and one game at a time, so it all starts today. Now, I mentioned this uh, Seahawks offensive line isn't great, so we're going to start out with a little bit, bit of pressure, although Geno throws it right to Emmanuel Forbes. He was trying to target DK Metcalf in this rain. Just like we talked about pregame, has the football very slick, and DK was slightly open on that curl, but superstar corner Emmanuel Forbes. Got to make sure we pick up his fifth-year option in the offseason but what a way to start already in field goal range and i made the focus running it inside with dudley because of uh what you just saw with geno smith there don't want to see that happen to jj ford too much and there you go last week dudley only five carries before that injury but 72 yards and a touchdown so definitely looking to pick up where he left off last week uh but we're not going to give it to dudley on this one instead Going to be a little play fake. See if we can get something positive downfield. And it's Curtis Samuel. And he gets in. Just like that. Believe it or not, Curtis Samuel leads the NFL in receiving yards. Number one in the NFL. He has had, I think, three or four. Three, definitely. 100-yard games. And it only took three plays for us to see a turnover. And also a touchdown. So if this is any indication of how this game is going to go for the Sentinels, I am here. Sign me up. 7-0 with not even a minute into this ball game. Gino hoping to reset after that miscue on the first drive. I'm hoping that he doesn't. And we sent pressure the first time. Let's go ahead and send pressure again. We're going to press up with our corners. Got to watch Kenneth Walker back there in the backfield. He is a very, very good running back. Indeed, it is going to be Walker. And there's Chase Young to meet him for a loss of one. So we got Chase Young on our team for the long haul. We got uh, Jonathan Allen on our team for the long haul. We got rookie Glenn May on the defensive line. Our defense is pretty much set, I would say, for a while. A little end around to DK. Come on now. Come on. We can't let DK do that. Quan Martin cannot wrap him up with the arm tackle as few DBs can. And DK going to pick up 16 on the reverse. Geno Smith now coming out shotgun. We got Dante Fowler kind of drop it back in coverage. And there's second year pro out of Miami, Justin Hayward. So we already got a sack. We already got a pick. We already got a touchdown. I am McDonald's freaking loving this one. We're going to go ahead and guess pass and shade underneath here. Geno looking for targets. And he is able to find his receiver there, Adam Troutman. The backup tight end. That was a good, good ball from Gino. Definitely the complete opposite of the first ball that he threw. 
That much is for sure. Let's uh, man up here. Play a little bit of man coverage. Geno's got the ball just past midfield and got Kenneth Walker behind him out of the shotgun. And, ooh, got to watch those passes, Geno, because the first curl route that you threw was a pick. That one wasn't a pick, but looked like it could have been pretty close. JSN is able to get that one here. So Gino coming back out of the shotgun here. Ball is on the 43. It's going to be Kenneth Walker up the gut. Nice blocking. Got kind of scared there for a moment. Thought that he could have housed that thing. Quan Martin does make sure that that doesn't happen. See if we can get back here again. Actually, no. I'm going to have Chase Young kind of play a little bit of coverage and nice completion to Jackson Smith and Jigba. After throwing that pick, Gino is now a perfect six for six and the Seahawks are in prime scoring position here although they are coming out zero wide receivers so you know your boy is going 60 out jacks blitz hopefully it's a handoff up the gut that would have been if that was a play fake Gino was going to be sacked if it was a run which it was the runner was going to be stopped Seahawks got two yards to go till they get points and they're coming out Ooh. zero wide receivers again why do teams do this in Madden? I will never understand. But I'm confident that we'll be able to stop this one because it's probably going to be a run. No, it's a play fake, actually. And it's an early breakup. Dodged a bullet there. Benjamin St. Juiced on the coverage. But don't know if uh, Pete Carroll is still the coach here in Seattle. But whoever the coach is, they are aggressive and they're going to go for it. I kind of like it. Gonna go ahead and press up here, hoping it's just a run to Walker and a off-target pass from Gino. So this rain definitely, definitely a factor here in Lumen Field. But now we got 98 yards to drive the ball downfield. Let's just get out of the shadows of our own goal line, please. Dudley, there we go. Nice moves there, picking up nine, giving us a little bit of breathing room and picking up where he left off. In last week's performance, now, I do definitely want to establish the run. We're just going to do that. We're going to rock with the run for a little bit. No need to do anything crazy. We see the rain definitely affecting Geno Smith. Don't want it to affect us. J.J. Ford is a dope for sure. But we'll just ride the sax train here for as long as we can. Would like Dudley to block on this one. Second and ten. We're going to... Hopefully try to get this uh, good old passing attack established. And look who it is. Curtis Samuel. Give this man a dev breakout challenge. He deserves it. He has definitely, you know, hasn't really been McLaurin too much in this. I mean, McLaurin is still balling out for us. He's, he's not far behind Curtis Samuel. But this has been Curtis Samuel's team so far this season. So give this man a dev trait breakout or something Please, speaking of a Chlorin, did he catch that? I think he did. Oh my God, we may get a booth review on that one, but we're not gonna. Okay, that was sketchy. Great catch, McLaurin. He must have heard me talking about Curtis Samuel, and he's like, whoa, 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 hold on, buddy. I'm still the St. Louis savior, and don't you freaking forget it. <laughs> McLaurin, depending on what uh, this Mike linebacker Chad Muma does here, could be oh, I don't like any of this stuff man Ford do you have the wheels Ford go you're slow you're so slow all that for two yards and that is gonna be the end of the first quarter Ford has the white boy speed for sure Seven nothing, and this rain is really affecting Geno Smith. So far, not affecting us too much. Although we still got three quarters for me to not have to do a poorly edited flashback and go back and uh, replay that statement. So, but again, I'm gonna just try to establish the run. JJ Ford, if he throws sub 20 passes in this one, I will be fine with that. There's a Brian Robinson sighting. So he wants more money. I'm going to need to see some stuff from my man today. Got to be screen pass to Dudley here. It's third and three. We're already in field goal range. So just don't want to, uh, you know, turn the ball over or anything like that. Dudley should be able to. Oh, nice change of direction. That's the elusibility of Dudley. Is that even a word? Elusibility? I don't know, but it sounds good. And Dudley's got it. Bart Burns, uh, need you to block for me, brother. 
We're going to roll out and maybe hit Logan Thomas on this corner route, potentially. Ford, can I get a block? Ford, I shouldn't be running with him. I need to stop that right now. And I don't know why coach really wants me to pass. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. Third and one from the eight. Why? Why would I pass in that situation? You tell me. We got the Saxonator. We got running it inside as our focus. Why would I want to pass when I can just punch it in with Dudley? That's right. That's why I call my own plays sometimes. Because CJ Smalls in real life, pretty good coach. CJ Smalls in the game, pretty good coach. But we don't always see eye to eye. 14 nothing. How about that? Who would have thunk it? Definitely, definitely not me. Kenneth Walker, nope. It's going to be a play fake, and we might have got cooked on this one. We did. We got cooked on that one. Dariq Young is a speedster. And, I mean, we never, never had a shot on that one. That was a beautiful play fake from Gino. Uh, who's in coverage there? It's rookie Tony Hoover, the vacuum cleaner. Or no, I'm sorry. That wasn't Tony Hoover. My apologies. It was actually Kendall. And what is up with the uh, meteor shower going on here pre-play? The heck is up with that? But yeah, Kendall is the man. He leads our team in picks. But he just got put on the George Foreman on that one. Not even going to lie. I am actually going to audible this. And Terry may be able to cook his man on press. We got one safety deep. And that should be it. Come on. Fine, McLaurin. There we go. There we go. One play touchdown. The play recognition from your boy, CJ Smalls, is a 99. If Terry's getting press and it's not a superstar or an X-Factor corner, chances are, and there's only one safety deep, chances are I'm going to do that. Rasul Douglas never stood a chance. Rasul Douglas, I like him. I like him. Former Green Bay Packer. But he never, ever stood a chance against Terry. And that was pretty clutch because the Seahawks just had a, what was it, a one-play, two-play drive. We respond with the one-play drive of our own. And really putting the pressure on Gino and Terry and Samuel. What a dynamic, electric wide receiver duo. And we got Jahan Dotson. And we got George Williams. Our receiver room is stacked. Let's go back to zone for a little while. I do not want to turn this into a shootout, though. I was liking. Uh, is this a play fake again? It is. And we got receivers so open. Gino can't find anybody. So he's going to go ahead and throw it away. But I was liking it much better when Geno Smith was inaccurate and missing his receivers. So I do not want to turn this into a shootout at all. We're going to go a little nickel blitz. Probably have Chase Young drop back here, play a little bit of coverage. Geno is going to check it down to Dariq Young, who is just the recipient of that long bomb. We're going to come out man, and we're going to audible into zone. Again, let's just play good zone coverage here. Get these Seahawks off of the field and really control the tempo of this ball game. But there's DK. He's not going to drop that. Huge gainer. Geno Smith, ever since that pick, he's pretty much been locked in. Go more pressure here. Justin Hayward, can you get in the backfield? Well, I mistimed it. So we're just going to go back to coverage in DK. I just got done praising him about how he's not going to drop a ball. And what did he do? Dropped a wide open slant on that one. So third and ten. Let's get him off the field. John Allen, get some pressure for me. I just gave you a new contract. Chase Young. Oh, couldn't get to Smith. But he got just close enough. And that is going to bring out Michael Dixon and the punting unit. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If we score here and go up 28-7, that will really, really bust this thing wide open. Just going to go ahead and fair catch it. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man's snoring, and I don't want to see Jahan Dotson fumble the ball. Brian appears to be a little shaken up. Did he get hurt on that one? He may have. And if that's the case, we may finally get to see our rookie, Dwight Jackson. I should probably work him into a few formations because I really want to see what the youngsters got. Got to keep that in mind for the next one. Terry, this could be his game. That is going to put him over 100 yards. And Ford is perfect. Seven for seven. McLaurin and Samuel asserting their dominance in this one. 
And this just has the feelings of a game that belongs to the Sentinels. Now, I say that, and anybody who watches me, you guys know what can happen in uh, second halves of games. But this has all the makings of putting us to 4-2 and two on the season. I feel like Mesh out of the shotgun's probably a good call here. Just want some short, safe completions. There's Jahan Dotson. Might have been able to turn it upfield and possibly turn the Jets on. But it's okay. Keeps the clock moving. And do we get the ball? We get the ball after halftime as well. So two-minute warning is here. Want to kill? If we can, if we double dip, man. If we double dip like we got no man, like we got no manners in a restaurant. I mean, this this could be all she wrote for the Seahawks. So we want to just take as much time off of the clock as possible. There's Brian. He wants a bag thrown his way. Kind of making a case for it, I I suppose. Dudley inside zone, but gonna be watching Jahan Dotson. Nope, not gonna go his way. Oop, missed time that, but. Dudley is ever elusive back there, so he pretty much turns something or nothing into something. Loving this defensive formation. Only three down linemen. Dudley, this may be his shot, and it is. So Dudley Saxton, second touchdown, right? Or is it his third? No, it's his second. One was to McLaurin. Dudley's second touchdown on the afternoon, and we are just absolutely – this is this may be – now, again – we got a whole second half to go. I realize that. And I just missed the extra point. So hopefully that I was about to say it's maybe the best game I ever played in this series. But hey, it's raining. Give my man Joey Sly a break, man. That ball's slick. It could tend to go shank it off to the right a little bit. Now, got to be careful here. There is still 39 seconds left. And teams always seem to get in this, these little two-minute situations and just do whatever they want to. And there's Adam Troutman again who is uh, looking like the best thing since freaking sliced bread in this one. Question is, I need some more sacks on Geno Smith. Can Jonathan Allen deliver that for me? Someone's getting back there, and it's a nice breakup by Emmanuel Forbes, who also has a pick in this one as well. Empty backfield for Geno, so probably should ought to have eyes on DK Metcalf. I would reckon that is going to be Jackson Smith and Jigba. Seattle going to burn their second timeout, and... They're kind of close to field goal range, but still quite a ways to go here. So hopefully we could just allow them to not score any points before halftime, double dip, and pretty much just put the good old nightcap on this thing. DK Metcalf did have that momentarily, but he went backwards, and that's going to be it. They're going to punt the ball. Not even going to matter. Sentinels are on cruise control. 27-7. Passing yards, great. Rushing yards, great. Seattle, in their own defense, they, you know, after that pick, they've really been able to put it together. We need the Cowboys to lose, though. Can I possibly see the Cowboys on the scoreboard? Well, I won't see the Cowboys, but we will see some nice highlights from Dudley Saxton. And maybe, you know, depending, he's star development, maybe he can get a breakout scenario. Terry McLaurin, he's already X-Factor, so that wouldn't do him any good. But what if we got Dudley to superstar development? Wouldn't that be something i uh we're gonna go defend the deep pass because that's where geno smith i mean really that was just that one play you know it's not like he was a surgeon out there and carving us up in the deep part of the field it was really just that one play but still last thing we want is the uh seahawks to get a nice spark here jahan dotson gonna get it to the 30 let's see if we can bust this thing wide open second half is upon us and surprise surprise we're going back to what's not Dudley this time. It's actually Brian Robinson. Five rushes for 28 yards. So, I mean, you know, good for a backup role, I would say. Nothing uh, too crazy, but we don't need him to do anything too crazy. We got the Saxonator back there. He's the one that does crazy things. So, mesh spot out of the gun. Oh, I'm just going to go to Jahan again. Board remains perfect as well. I'm confident Dudley can pick this up. So, hopefully... We could just get the two yards that we, nope, well, oh, Dudley, Dudley, he's fighting forward. Did he get it? He did it. Look at the effort. Dudley was definitely, the blocking was non-existent on that one, but Dudley did that all by his lonesome. Went to the right, got stuffed up there by Will Devlin, cut it back to the left, ran behind Damian Lewis, and did the rest by himself. I mean, give, come on, Madden. Give this man a dev trait 
breakout. He deserves it. He definitely, definitely deserves it indeed. First and 10 here. We are continuing these good drives. Bart Burns wide open on the stick route. That may be his first catch. Bart Burns been a little bit quiet in this game here. It is his first catch for only four yards. So Dudley, I don't know if we're going to get our uh, 150 that we need here, guys. Not looking like we're going to so far in this one, but that's okay. I don't really care about that. The main thing I care about is getting the dub today. And that all starts with picking up a first down here on third and five. So that is going to be a big, big sack there by Charles Omenihue. And for the first time, we're going to see Tress Way. So did not complete the uh, double dip scenario that we were looking for. But that's okay because there is a still a steep, steep hill to climb for the Seahawks. Maybe get a fumble here. That would be nice. Not going to happen. And Gino and the boys take over. Now, we got a three-score lead here. So as long as our offense continues to play well, we'll be fine. I mean, our defense, excuse me. As long as our defense continues to play well, we'll be fine. That's not a good start, though, allowing Kenneth Walker to pick up eight. He's been quiet in this one, and I would, I would prefer that to be the case. Now, we're going to go pressure, but I need an extra body over here on DK Metcalf, I feel like, because, yep, that's exactly... Where Gino's going to go, and let's not poke the bear, boys. Let's let sleeping dogs lie here. We haven't heard, I mean, DK had a couple couple good plays there in the first half. But all in all, he was quiet, and we really need to keep it that way. So let's just uh, lock down, play good defense. It's screen, it's screen. Gino Smith almost got sacked there by John Allen. Wouldn't that have been something? Instead, it's second and ten. Go ahead and play some good lockdown man coverage here. Gino targeting his receiver. He is going to find actually Kenneth Walker was spread out there in the formation. Not sure if that was an incompletion or if he just picked up no game. But either way, let's uh, audible into zone. Just want to play nice solid zone coverage. John Allen should be winning, and he almost gets to Gino. He's about to get to Gino. Somebody crash on Gino, please. That was way too close for comfort, man. They may have to go for this, too. No, they're going to punt it. So Pete Carroll or whoever. Got to watch the fake, though. Teams have been faking me out lately on punts. Not going to be a fake this time. It's going to be a terrible punt. We're going to fair catch it with Jahan. Chance again to still bust the score wide open. Feeling a PA rollout here. See if Ford can... Remain perfect on the day. He another diving catch from Terry. Oh my God. Terry at five for 148. He may jump Samuel in this one. Not 100% sure. And I came out outside run. I don't necessarily like that. But we're going to go ahead and rock with it anyway. It's going to ID up. This guy over here as the mic. Uh, need some good blockers. We... Got him. Okay. Maybe Dudley will get to a buck 50. Ball is on the 46. Second and two. We're going to do draw play to Saxton. And he's starting to inch his way closer to the century mark. 14 carries, 77 yards. And maybe with the combination of him and Robinson, maybe we will get 150. I don't know what that's going to do for us. You know, I don't know if that's going to give us extra XP. It's not going to give us a dev trait breakout or anything like that. But whatever it is, I want it. And right now, I just want some good block. Oh, Dudley cutting it up field viciously on the juke. Now at 90 yards from Saxon as he continues to be our feature player in this game. And really, this whole season, it's been Dudley, Samuel, McLaurin, and Ford. Those are our uh, four horsemen, so to speak, and first in completion from Ford, and it was an ugly one. All right, coach is saying TE attack. I haven't called this yet, and I just realized I haven't even called my uh, signature PA crosser out of single back X bunch nasty, but I haven't had to yet. I haven't had a reason to do it. Keeping it stuffed in the good old back pocket. Let's see if, oh, Bart Burns has opened up the seam. Bart, JJ Ford led him a little bit too far. He had to adjust and kind of stumbled on the catch there, or that may have been six as well. Come on, Dudley. I believe in you, brother. Just needs to... Oh, it's not even Dudley. It's Brian. Ah, Brian. You freaking vulture, you. I didn't even realize that he was in that set. That should have been Dudley's hat trick, man. 
Look, I'm not going to argue with it because we do go up big on the scoreboard. But I feel like maybe three touchdowns from Dudley and we could have got a breakout scenario. We may still get it. But, Brian, you sneaky devil, you. I see you. I see you trying to get a bag. I see you trying to get a contract extension, sneaking into these sets. You ain't fooling me. Gino coming out shotgun again. Three wide receivers and thought that was going to be. That was a nice play fake there. Wow. And Adam Troutman continues to be a feature player in this offense. Stop me if you've heard that one before. I bet you haven't because it's Adam Troutman. Why would you? Figured you'd be calling no offense name a lot in this one, but so far we haven't. And let's see if maybe Justin Hayward can get some pressure off the edge. Nope, mistimed it again. So that's just me. And tell you what, we're not getting home on these sacks, but the pressure has been there. And it has forced uh, some errant throws from Geno. So some things that won't always show up in the stat sheet, you know, the sacks and whatnot, not going to be there. But doesn't matter. The stat sheet doesn't tell the whole story as we see there. Don't know how he was able to get that out to JSN. Tony Hoover on the coverage, but only for a gain of four. Play good, solid zone coverage again here. And the Seahawks, I'm sure, would have to punt again. Jonathan Allen, I keep freaking mistiming that. I keep, look, I press, you know, the right analog stick to do like a bull rush. And I'm pressing it so many times that when the the D, uh, the D lineman finally gets off his block, he just like does the Harlem shake or something back there. And, and this punter is absolutely terrible. Michael Dixon, sir, you suck. I don't see any world where this isn't th two straight hands off to Dudley. And if he doesn't pick up a first down, then go for the pass, but it's not going to matter. Dudley is, hopefully, going to get over the century mark in this one. Let's go over said century mark right now, please. Big hole for Dudley, and he's going to pick it up with ease. Also, stiff arming a guy as well, and maybe I kind of want to see a little bit of Dwight Jackson, man. I'm not going to take out Dudley because I still want to get him three touchdowns, but let's move up Dwight Jackson instead of Brian Robinson. And I want to see what the what what the rooks got. We ha and I don't still don't see him in any sets here. I may have to tweak that a little bit because yeah, it's still just Brian and Dudley. So whatever. I want to see what Dwight Jackson's got. So I got to find a way to possibly work him into some sets here. But also want to see what Brian Robinson's got because I'm trying to decide if we should in fact extend him. Doesn't have the speed of Dudley or else he could have probably turned the corner on that one. Look, third and seven here. We're not playing hero ball. If I got to punt this back to the Seahawks, then so be it. So we're just going to go safe screen pass to Dudley. And maybe, just maybe, he might still pick this up. And he does. Forward 15 of 16. Only one incomplete pass. And we can pretty much just bleed this clock out at this point. And now we see Dwight Jackson, number 39, rookie out of UAB. I mean... <laughs> his inaugural carry is not going to be very good, but nobody had an interest in picking up uh, Uchenna Nwosu there. Give Dwight one more chance here. Maybe get it outside, and uh, yeah. I think the offensive linemen are just tired. All that superb blocking they've been doing for Dudley and Brian, because uh, the blocks ain't hitting for my man Jackson right now. Let's get Dudley his third touchdown of the afternoon, and then... Put this one to bed, shall we? If he don't get a breakout scenario next next week, after having three touchdowns in today's game and whatever he's at, a buck thirty, a buck forty, that would just be absolutely criminal. And I'll tell you what else is criminal. I'm feeling like a criminal because we just robbed the Seahawks of a good game here, 41 to seven. Dare I say, could be our most dominant game played so far. In this entire series, we will take the dub here in dominating fashion. Definitely not Pete Carroll. That is not Pete Carroll, even in the slightest. Uh, but a 41 no, to okay. 7 victory. Do not recall a time that we've played this dominant. Maybe there was a game, I think last season, we played Dallas randomly and held them to seven points, I, I want to say. But wow, we were locked in from the opening whistle. And really never looked back. So, J.J. Ford, oh, man, almost a perfect quarterback rating. That one incomplete pass 
Not going to allow us to get the 158.3. Geno, I mean, decent yardage, but poor incompletion. Had that interception. And Dudley Saxon, how about that? The combination of Dudley Saxon and Brian Robinson and Ford with his one little petty yard. Uh? We will get the 150 on the ground that we needed. And Dudley got three touchdowns as well. And Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. Actually, really, just Terry McLaurin. He was the main focal point of our offense. Didn't have to throw the ball too much in this one. Emmanuel Forbes had that pick. And then at the garbage time, we had actually two sacks from James Smith-Williams and then also one from Justin Hayward as well. So that is going to improve us to 4-2 and two on the season, making a statement. I heard some boos there from the crowd in Lumen Field. And depending on what the Cowboys do this week, I feel like I say that every single episode, depending on what the Cowboys do this week, we may be number one in the division. Got some big upgrades here. Brian, I got to get him a little bit more elusive because my man's jukes and his speed just really aren't hitting. He has a power back, you know, which is fine, but I want him to be a little more well-rounded. We got rookie Glenn May out of Washington. We don't really, he don't really see the field too much. We're going to go power rusher with him. That's going to get him up to a 75, but he is young, a rookie already at 75. Having that normal dev could hinder his progress. But he could be something. And then Will Devlin, I don't feel like he needs to get too much better. Well, I guess pass blocking, run block finesse. We're going to go definitely go agile. And that will also get him a little bit closer to a scheme fit as well. Seemed obvious, given the uh, conditions, that the running game would play a huge role in who won. Got to give the credit to the running backs, man. I will have to give a tip of the cap to the running backs. They knew they were in for a tough day and a big challenge, but they stepped up in a huge way. And all running backs will have plus three carrying and plus three break tackle for the next game. That's a nice little boost, nice little bonus. I will certainly take it. So as of right now, better record than the Cowboys. We'll have to see what they do next week. But so far, season number three of Sentinels franchise is looking pretty good for us. So... That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.